so I've been reached by two students uh, from uh, University of Saxion, Netherlands, and their course is called Creative Media and Game Technology. And these two guys asked if I would be able to answer a couple of their questions. So here I am waiting for their Skype call right now. What's up? What's up? Hi, hey. man. <laughs> Hi, guys. In your videos, you have explained uh, a couple of times um, what was your past, how you got uh, into VFX. Uh, but can you just briefly go over that uh, once again? How did you start? And uh, how, m most importantly, how did you realize this is your passion, that uh, you want to do that for the rest of your life? All right. So that actually was a big part of my speech at Video Copilot. <laughs> Um, basically, I received my uh, first computer as a present from my grandfather at the age of uh, 12, right? Mm. And I quickly got bored of games, so I started to explore what can I do with the, with the computer. And there were uh, no such thing as a YouTube back then, so I just experimented, literally. I, I somehow got into scripting, then I wanted to manipulate some images. I discovered Photoshop and was just clicking different buttons. Over time, over I, th I think three years, I got my first clients and uh, they wanted business cards, brochures, all that kind of stuff. And literally by just clicking buttons, I got into that stuff. You realize that it's your passion if it's, if it's that annoying thing in your head that doesn't let you go at night, it keeps you cur curious about different stuff, how to do this, how to do that, and you're constantly thinking about it, you kind of realize straight away that, yeah, I quite like that stuff. So basically my next question would be, how does a person like me, who is 20 years old, uh, at the start of his journey, doesn't really know what his passion is, but he knows that he's interested in the creative field, and my question would be um, how to find your passion but um, thinking about your answer that you gave me is basically you just did uh, you did Photoshop and then you basically realized that it's your passion by um, just doing it right yeah I was just curious how how to create more and more complicated things so do you believe that uh, Actually, the best way to uh, find a passion is to ju by just um, uh, testing many new things uh, and until you find that one that keeps you awake at night. Many new things in, uh, in this field or I mean, in many I mean, different yeah. things. For example, me, I'm, uh, I know that I'm interested in 3D, uh, but I know that I also am interested um, in pr probably programming. And yeah, it's kind of... the the field, the same field or maybe drawing uh, and how do I realize which one is the perfect for me? Do I just do that f until um, it gets boring or until it um, until I really want to do that every day? Well, it, there is nothing bad in trying things out really because yeah. um, in, in my journey I tried sports, I tried music, I tried many different things and as I said I started with uh, brochures and business cards also did some web design web development even you have to try a lot of things in order to realize that this is your stuff eventually I got into 3d and then into motion design and now I'm stuck with VFX because I realized that that's actually what I really really want to do and I realized that not that far uh, not that uh, long time ago it was like six years ago maybe all that time before that, like eight years, I was just experimenting with yeah. anything I could. Do you think it's a bad thing to have uh, maybe experimenting with, um, for example, I'm doing a music project and I'm doing a 3D project and I'm trying to invest myself in both of them. Do you think it's that's a problem or do you think it's a problem to have uh, many projects on your head that are not exactly in the same discipline? Uh, like it, it's still a creative field, but it's like totally different workflows, totally different programs. Do you think that's a problem or is it fine until you find your passion? 
Yeah, I think if if that's something you really like, if that's something you really enjoy to do, music, whatever, just keep doing it. Eventually you will, you know, like naturally filter off stuff that you don't like because you will want yeah. to focus on on whatever you actually is passionate about. How uh, would you go with learning the craft? Um, after you decided what you want to pursue, um, how do you practice what are how did you personally practice so that you become so good at it <laughs> thanks well <laughs> uh as i said when i started there was no youtube so i was practicing by literally clicking and experimenting the buttons and reading a couple of articles on internet but when i got into 3d i realized there is youtube there are other artists that are, that are teaching, that are sharing their knowledge, that are basically trying to do the same thing I'm doing. But did you have like a certain schedule, like today I'm practicing five hours, tomorrow I'll be practicing three hours. Did you have, or uh, every day I'm practicing from this to this time, or was it just you practiced whenever you could? No, I just, I was just doing it 24 seven, really. <laughs> I even quit uni because uh, I thought it's d distracting me. I know you guys are in the Netherlands, it's probably a totally different level. The university in my country, they couldn't offer anything interesting, really. Okay. So I quit and I ke kept freelancing and I kept self-developing self myself. Self-developing myself, self-developing. Self-developing. And uh, do you think that self-discipline was a key aspect in your self-development? Self-discipline is definitely really important, but I think this is the case when passion uh, comes in. Yeah. If you're crazy about that thing, that's what keeps you awake at night. That's what keeps yeah. you in that chair sitting there for hours and clicking the buttons, <laughs> really. Now I'm going to change the topic a little bit and I want to ask you about talent. Um, do you believe that it actually exists? Are you, is it something that you are born with or is it something, is it basically just a skill that you have developed for a long time? Uh, and do you believe you can, if talent existed in your opinion, do you believe you can outwork talent by just working very hard on something, on your passion? Well, talent definitely exists like a uh like a good actor and a bad actor same with artists you can be a good artist or a bad artist you can definitely outwork it but you have to be damn talented to do so it's a pretty hard industry all right and you have to be super patient you know in order to learn new, new things it needs talent really because what will you create like super fancy cubes you have to have fantasy, some sort of fantasy in your head. So you believe that um, working is key, but still you have to find what your talent is. But maybe that's also really close to your passion. Maybe talent and passion are actually very closely bound together. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, and then um, I just want to talk about a little bit about burning out. Um, you have you have made a video about that uh, on its own, but um, is it is it something? Is there a pattern that you have uh, witnessed? Is it something that uh, happens? For example, um, it always happens that you burn out when you have a lot of projects to do, or is it something that just randomly? Sometimes you just randomly just get creative block. Well, most of the cases you burn out because of the work you don't like. And it's commercials, it's clients work, all that fun. I believe you can't burn out if you're doing something you're really enjoying. Like I can't burn out if I'm working on my case studies, for example, but I do burn, burn out quite a lot because we have a lot of work. Most of the times it's not the things you want to do, but you have to. And then the logical step to recover is to take a break. Mm -hmm. Uh, and exactly that about the breaks you have explained in your video, but uh, has it happened? For example, how much was um, the longer break, the longest break that you took? Is it if you take, for example, just two days, but you still don't feel like getting back to work? Is it fine, in your opinion, to take a, a longer break? Or, um, or do you have like a certain set of time that you don't go over with breaks? 
No, I don't think it's something uh, structured like two days will heal me. Yeah. No, it's not. Um, I disappeared from YouTube for like a couple of months and I didn't really do anything apart from case studies. I was working on something that gives me some energy. It was, uh, um, I think, a car case study, the pumpkin with flames yeah. case study. I, ju I just has had to do something but I couldn't find time to keep doing YouTube and case studies. There is no limits. You can take as much time as you need or as you can, really, depending on your job. <laughs> there is a trend nowadays of other YouTubers uh, and influencers um, in general that you have to hustle, uh, like 24-7 hustle, 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 uh, and never take breaks. What You mentioned something that you worked actually yourself 24-7 or something, uh, but... Speaking in a in a in a daily way, for, uh, every day, um, do you work the whole day, or do you think during the day you should have some breaks to clear your mind or to ha get some yeah uh, air for your head? Well, again, it depends on you on how how do you feel about it. If you want to take a break, just 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 do it. I personally do work twenty four seven just because I don't have a choice. We have large amount of projects running right then i want to do youtube and then i want to i want to produce my case studies and i have little daughter and wife family that i have to spend time with so it's tricky to find that balance but um, i think it's it's really personal preference for everyone if you want if you can work 24 7 why not? It's not a big, big deal. You have to realize if it will benefit you a lot or not. And do you think you find the, bal the balance in your life, like work-life balance? No, totally not. I'm, <laughs> I'm bad at, at this. I'm guilty of working all the time. And, uh, but I'm hoping that I'm working to find that balance finally at some point. Okay. <laughs> um, and something else that's not... Um, really connected to art but more of your um, mind of your spiritualness do you do um, any like side activities like uh, to to keep your mind straight uh, for example meditation or sports do you have any other hobbies except your work uh, i definitely have to hit the gym but <laughs> i don't have time for that unfortunately and i'm uh, I'm guilty of not doing anything that you mentioned. I only read scientific literature related to industry, tech news, all that kind of stuff. I'm really narrow focused in content I'm consuming, unfortunately, or luckily, I don't know. How ahead in the future do you like to think? Is it, are you more uh, going with the flow because of the many projects you have, or do you still uh, keep an eye on the on your goals in the future, what you want to achieve? My vision of the future is really abstract just because mm -hmm. how fast the world and people change. I just realized that I want to do VFX exclusively like six years ago. Before that, I was doing something totally different and I didn't know what I will do. And I didn't know anything about technology, hardware, cameras, all that kind of stuff. And now I'm here doing like absolutely different stuff so i th i think personally there is no point really to look too much ahead you can plan stuff for for a year ahead that would make sense you have mentioned in one of your videos that um, for example of the population in usa only 1.4 percent of them are artists um and although that's the case many artists think um like, there are too many artists, the, I cannot uh, become an artist. Uh, but do you think that the demand for artists in the future is going to grow? Uh, for more movies, for example, games? Or do you think it's getting overcrowded and it's there? there's not going to be enough place for artists? What I said in that video is still mm. true. And uh, I'm definitely happy to see you young guys who are passionate about what they're doing. You know, you're definitely interested in that green screen behind you, composing something on, on the back of yourselves. That's cool. I think the industry, especially development and game development, are so kind of... Um, have to be careful. 
with what I say here, are, are so geeky, technically yeah. not uh, inviting for many young people. They're, they're not really wanting to go into that industry. It's especially pronounced in the development sector at the moment. For example, I have a relative who is a back-end developer. The demand on his services is growing. There are no replacement coming. He's getting more professional, but there is no re young replacement coming because people don't want to learn how to code, how to script stuff. Same with v with the high-end VFX. Uh, people can't keep up with the technologies, how they develop the tools. It has to be a certain lifestyle, a certain circle of interests. Definitely not Instagram influencers and top models, which is so popular nowadays. To answer your question, I would say demand will remain the same. It definitely won't go down. Uh, and you mentioned, uh, for example, that in VFX, um, let's say big movie companies and so on, they're so ahead of the game that people that are just starting feel that they could never catch up and um, what do you believe is the best way to to be successful in that area do you believe that uh, for example internship could be a, a key thing uh, to build connections for example with real companies and to see how it really works because in university um, we can like we can study some basic stuff but Nothing like the big screen, like Hollywood movies and so on. So uh, what do you believe is the, the key thing to, to or the, the thing that mostly uh, makes your chances bigger to, uh, to become successful in a field like, for example, movies and VFX? Well, to become successful, you just have to keep pushing yourself. It's 24-7 work. Um, yeah. it's consistent self-studying, just filter the content you're consuming and all that stuff. In terms of networking, it's definitely a good idea about internship. What I will say is it's important what kind of company you will find for your internship. If it will be a company that is focusing on commercials, chances are high you will develop in that um, mm. direction. Yeah. If you will find a film company that is focusing on VFX, film stuff and all that kind of fun, then you will develop in that direction. And it's really important because I got sucked into commercials a lot and I think I want to move my career in future towards movies. And it's much harder now for me because I am I have a lot of uh, responsibility in this direction. So that's something uh, I would advise to keep in mind. You have said in your videos that a key step for your development was moving to Britain. Uh, so, but but can you pinpoint something um, exact? It's something exact, uh, a particular event that uh, happened that made your career go f go from this level to this level, like a big jump in your career. Moving to UK was definitely a big step, but I think, as for my personal decisions, uh, it was decision to start learning 3D all the time, focus and throw all my energy on that. That's number one. Why was it so important to move to UK? Because uh, being a VFX artist is a really expensive activity. It's hardware, it's cameras, it's, um, uh, it's the gear, it's the software, and then maybe paid courses, whatever. It's all quite expensive. In my country, for example, the salary is around 350 euros. So where more likely you would be able to buy the latest NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti. Things like that are important because it will directly influence your development and the speed of your development. So countries like Netherlands, uh, Norway, UK, US, Germany, France, they are much better for that kind of stuff. Do you believe the way to, because in the beginning you, you don't have money, <laughs> uh, you, you only have your passion and you want to work on your stuff, on your personal project and self-studies, but at the same time you need money to, to buy the gear that you need. Um, what's the best way, in your opinion, to, to combine that? Should you work like a um, minimum wage for you, I mean, so that you can live from it and then just save up the rest and also 
uh, invest a lot of time on, in 3D? Or do you believe you should work more so that you can buy your stuff faster and then focus more on um, on investing in your craft? What was the best way in your in your opinion? My personal example is unhealthy. Uh, I was saving money only to pay the rent and buy food, really. Everything else I was investing in uh, the gear, the flashes, the camera, the backgrounds. But it's not really the way of doing stuff. These days you have opportunities to hire equipment. You can ask friends who have that equipment to try it out. You actually have to think about do you really need it? Because examples with green screen footages from Hollywood can be found on internet or you can buy them for, I don't know, hundred dollars or something and practice on that. I would advise to invest in software more than into hardware because mm -hmm. software is uh, nowadays it's available on subscriptions. It's really affordable and you better learn s softwares because hardware is something that is constantly changing while you're young and you're not a, an established professional, Ch chances are high by the time you will be high and professional, mm -hmm. your gear will be outdated already. So, My last question for today is uh, about purpose. You have uh, talked about that in your videos, but still, what do you believe is your main purpose? What do you want to achieve through the art you create? And I mean, uh, not the commercials, because that's work, but I mean the art, like the pumpkin, for example, the things you create, what do you want to achieve through that? Uh, talking about that pumpkin, uh, I created that to test stuff, to test Cinema 4D, to test mm -hmm. Houdini, how they work together, to test Octane, how much I can load, how much I can get out of it, all that kind of stuff and showcase it on YouTube to inspire people to do that stuff, to showcase that it's actually possible. If you know how to use it properly, you can do pretty damn cinematic stuff. That's, I guess, my purpose. And I also want to deliver complex stuff that I found complicated to learn in a much simpler form without overcomplicating mm -hmm. things. There is a tendency of people really overcomplicating everything on academic level. But in reality, it's just fancy terms and there is much more simple way of explaining that to the audience that will massively benefit from it. That's what I'm doing and that's why it's free. Yeah, because of that, we thank you a lot <laughs> that you try to inspire us this way to show us that this, that's possible. And yeah, we really appreciate that. And yeah, thank you for this interview a lot. Love. My pleasure. Hola. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> my, my first question is actually about uh, university and education. Yeah. You're a yep. self-taught 3D generalist, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. being involved in a large part of the production process in movies and VFX, you, you have a pretty good knowledge of the whole, you know, the, the lifespan of a production of a movie or a commercial or anything like that. So... Uh, if you could go back in time to university, which course would you choose? Would it be like art direction or maybe VFX? I would probably go on a fil film related uh, course, film, f film school or something like that, just because I'm really passionate about cinematography, cam cameras, directing, all that stuff, everything that happens on set. And I think I could really learn new stuff in the film school. You're really busy and uh, you show that on, on YouTube also and uh, between traveling uh, to shooting sites and YouTube you, you have to work really quickly and efficiently. Um, a part of uh, good planning, what do you think is a crucial skill? Uh, for example, knowing a lot of different applications which you can use during production and uh, or having deeper knowledge of cinematography principles or 3D principles or what would you say really saves you time during your work? I think it's a combination of everything really. The good thing about this industry is that there is no such thing as a wasted time learning something, all right? I, I was working in 3D Max, in Maya, in Cinema 4D, in Photoshop, in After Effects just enormous uh, range of softwares and not none of this 
time was wasted. It relates to everything you learn. Cameras, cinematography, directing, anything. And over time, you develop skills to predict problems and eliminate them. If something would take me, I don't know, a week to do seven years ago, it will take me a day to do today. Just because I know what to expect, what problems may occur and how to eliminate, eliminate them and how to solve them. It's a combination of everything, that's for sure. Okay, next, next one is simple and it, it's actually a part of, of what you said that no time spent learning is, is you know, lost time. Where do you learn from? As I told the... Uh, how do I pronounce your names? Petar? Peter. 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 Peter and <laughs> Colin. Okay. As I told Peter, um, when I started there, w there was no YouTube. So I was learning just from my own experiments and clicking the different buttons, reading a couple of articles on the internet. Today I'm learning from YouTube mainly. What I might need to learn is a really specific questions and I know where to find answers on YouTube, on forums, over internet and so on. Sometimes these days I'm buying expensive courses. For example, I finished a color grading course and there were a lot of stuff in there that I already knew, but little things, little part of it which I didn't know it's so valuable because that's what keeps pushing you forward. So it's basically wherever you, you find your answers is yeah. It's good. Because when you're when you're when you're learning, when you're working, you have uh, particular questions in your head. Google yes. can answer anything. Been there, yeah. Uh, we have a considerable following on social media being YouTube and Instagram. Do you think that building a personal brand is as important as having sufficient skill to, to do, like to realize your ideas, to, to communicate them properly to people? Well, I think the number of followers definitely influences if the people will listen to you or not. <laughs> yeah, but uh, personal brand and skills are often very unrelated things. On YouTube, for example, how much um, really bad content is, content is out there. I'm not talking about people who tries to educate others. I'm talking about different vlogs of absolutely random and weird people. Why is it there? But it's their personal brand, you know, and they have like some of them have millions of followers. They are influencers and people will listen to what they're saying. But it's, I uh, don't think you have to be super skilled in order to build your personal brand now. <laughs> Next questions are a bit more, more technical. Uh, but right now we, we study 3D modeling and it's oriented towards games. And we're busting our asses off to optimize everything and not have a single polygon, you know, over the, over the top. So when you model for your advertisements or movies or or the projects you have do you take poly count into consideration and is it something that you really care about or is it just there i use octane render engine all right and it's a gpu based en engine and yeah, gpus uh, yeah and gpus are limited to memory means that there is a certain limits of geometry i can have in my scene so I'm doing exactly the same thing you're doing for games, but just for my cases, for my, my, my shots, my videos, I have to consider that I have that amount of data that I can store in order to be able to render it. I'm opti optimizing as well. Okay, the other one is more oriented towards hardware. What's the, the most valuable piece of hardware you've invested in? Okay. Uh... Well, the most important probably was the present I received from my grandfather because otherwise I wouldn't know what computer stuff is at all. Over the years, I think it's my big camera, the one I'm shooting on now, FS, Sony FS7, because it really pushed my, um, really pushed my cinematography skills and I started to implement more of live footage into my VFX shots and vice versa. The second thing is probably my first four to eight GPUs 
because it's it's really allowed me to render much uh, higher quality stuff and experiment more with what I can do. Proper render farm is essential if you want to do 3D. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not necessarily have to be a render farm, it can be a machine with two, three or as much as you can afford GPUs in it, if, if, if GPU rendering is something you're into. Basically, decent, powerful workstation is, an, is quite essential because you can't uh, learn complex, super complex stuff on an old MacBook, you know. Because I, I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> when the new RTX dropped, I was super pumped and then I saw the price tag and... Mm. What I, what I will advise you, um, have a look at razor blades with RTX. They are quite pricey, probably maybe even a bit more pricier than MacBooks. But these station, these laptops are are bloody ridiculous. Seriously, I'm about to record a review because I own the, a bigger laptop, Razer Blade Pro with the GTX 1080 in it. I will do a video about this one and this is a totally different beast. I will showcase the benchmarks, what I did on it, how I stress tested and it's basically my main machine now. I'm doing everything on it. I, I will I will say everything in the video. It's a really good thing. Um, staying tuned. Yeah. To good man. <laughs> <laughs> a, a loyal viewer. Okay, last question is, is more regarding the future. Um, some time ago I watched a presentation by Andrew Price, who also known as Blender Guru, uh, on the, the Blender convention in 2018 about the influence of artificial intelligence uh, on the creative industry and on the 3D industry specifically. Um, there, he showcased a bunch of cases like uh, procedural modeling in, modeling in Houdini uh, for example you, you build the the node setup in, in Houdini and then you're able to generate different buildings or stuff like that um, and also AI aided creativity where you type some text and AI actually generates images do you think that um, it will change the. It will certainly change the three D industry. But do you think that their AI will take over jobs, or it will help people mainly? It may take over jobs of narrow focused professionals. For example, rotoscopy. That's something AI should change. Just get rid of that annoying process. It's so time consuming. It's so. It has to be automated. That's where AI will help. To answer the question if the jobs will be taken over, no, I don't think so. I think that AI will enhance the tools we use in the pipeline, will help us to produce more realistic results, will help us to produce better results faster, but it definitely won't be able to create anything that human mind can come up with, if you know what I mean. Not in this century at least. Oh, thank you for this interview. I had a blast doing it. I hope you enjoyed it too. It's, it was my pleasure, boys. Uh, you, you, you brought me some content for YouTube, which is good. <laughs> so, Kalin and Petar from Netherlands, they're students from what course? Creative Media and Game Technology. Creative Media and Game Technology. Young Minds, I'm really happy that uh, there are guys like these who actually are not afraid to approach, to ask questions, to be curious about how to learn, what to learn, be inspired and move forward. Last one. I'm using Redshift now as a renderer and it's pretty, you know, it's fast, but it's kind of complicated. And do you think Octane is better? Because Octane is actually like half the price. And at some point in the near future, I hope I want to buy a renderer and which one is, is better? <laughs> well, um, so, Redshift is biased engine, all right? Yeah. Octane is unbiased. 
but what that means, you, you've seen my videos about render engines. Redshift doesn't have any limits in terms of what you will load into it, but as it's a biased engine, you will have to spend a lot of time with the various settings in order to make a ple pleasant looking image. In Octane, you will get the same image physically correct in a few clicks, but Octane has limits with memory and stuff. It's not as, you know, um, as crucial now because we have RTX and NVLink that you can, when you can combine memory and all that stuff. I would say Octane, uh, and they have some ambitious plans about different systems they are working on. RNDR, which will be a cloud-based um, render service. You will be able to utilize the power of, of my machines of all the artists' machines for your projects for a small fee. You will be able to rent out your machines if you have any to earn money. For me personally, creative freedom is much more important than lack of limits, if that makes sense. Because I want to spend time with lighting my scenes, messing with textures and stuff, instead of wasting time with some backend settings with V-Ray, uh, Redshift, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I would go, I would say go with uh, Octane, especially now they have a uh, subscription, so it's really affordable. Uh, th thanks a lot uh, that you even, even saw us, saw uh, yeah. our messages. We didn't really sure. think that you would even, yeah, see them, but yeah, that was really, really nice surprise. Okay, I, ho I hope my uh, answers helped you in your work, um, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, sure. bye boys. Bye boys. Bye. bye. As you can see, I am replying to messages that I'm receiving on Instagram, on Facebook, but there are so many that sometimes it's just impossible to read all of them and reply because it would take days out of my life. But I'm grateful for all your comments, all your messages. Please don't hesitate to send them. I aim to reply to anyone when I can, unless you're asking something stupid. Thanks for watching, see you soon, peace.